Hi, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, and this is your Singer 431G, uh, sometimes referred to as uh, 401A free arm, because it's basically uh, not the same machine, but uh, very similar in so many ways. And uh, this is the final test before we pack her up to ship her out to you. And um, in this test, we're going to go over the basics of operation. Uh, you may already be conversant with this machine and uh, not need any instructions. But we're going to also post this uh, video to the internet for the sake of other owners that... Uh, uh, could use a little bit of advice. So, uh, uh, as you can see, this has the uh, the same um, uh, stitch pattern uh, selector as the 401. Uh, same tension assembly, uh, same uh, stitch length. Uh, it doesn't have the feed drop that your uh, 401 has. And uh, there's a button in the back here that if you push, you can slide the machine bed off. And then you have a free arm here to uh, sew pant legs or uh, shirt sleeves or whatever you uh, need to sew on a free arm. Uh, and in this test, we're going to uh, wind the bobbin and uh, thread the machine and go over the uh, how to work the various controls. So we'll start by winding a bobbin. And um, so we'll put a spool on the spool pin. Doesn't matter which one. Go around the tension device for the uh, bobbin winder around the standoff over here and onto your bobbin. And your bobbin is going to wind in the clockwise direction. It's easiest to start the bobbin winding if you put the thread on the bobbin before you put it on the machine. Uh, go from the inside out through one of the little holes in the side of the bobbin. Hold on to that little tail and give it several wraps just to hold the thread on the bobbin while you wind. Again, we're going to go around the standoff and we're going to put the bobbin on so that it winds onto the bobbin this way. Then uh, there's a little lever here you pull out. And uh, that sets the bobbin into winding position. And uh, there's a little finger on the back side that uh, when your bobbin is full, it pushes the bobbin away from the uh, hand wheel so it stops winding so you don't uh, get a mess of thread. Uh, in the center of your hand wheel is the clutch knob. It's a big painted clutch knob in this case. But turn it towards you quarter to a half a turn until it hits the stop uh, and then you're ready to wind. Your uh, hand wheel will spin and wind the bobbin but the rest of the machine won't cycle. So uh, here we go. Give it a little gas, no reason to hurry. The faster you go the more chance you have of getting a tangle. And that should be plenty for our demonstration purposes. So push the bobbin winder thingy in again. Take your bobbin off. And remember, remember to tighten your clutch knob. Your bobbin <clears throat> goes into the bobbin race here. 
below the slide plate. And you want the thread to come off the top in this direction. When you put it in, you go into the little, little notch there and Okay, the little notch is over here. <clears throat> then you can feel that you've got a little bit of drag on your thread when you pull it. To thread the machine, <clears throat> put your spool on the spool pin. Go into your first thread guide at the top here. Go, um, let's see, this one's fancy. You want to go under this thread guide, over this thread guide, and down to your tinting discs. So we're going to go under over and down. You have two sets of discs uh, so you can use a twin needle um, doesn't matter which set you go into. Make sure you catch the check spring here and go all the way up until your thread goes into the notch at the top of the tension assembly. And from there you're going to go up, catch this big thread guide, go through your take up lever from right to left. Catch this thread guide, this thread guide, and this thread guide. And when you pull on your thread, you'll see the check spring move up and down. That's how you'll know you've got it right. And then there's one more thread guide that's kind of... Uh, unless you're looking for it, you don't really see it. It's a little slot here on the bottom of the needle clamp. So go into that one, then down and into your needle to the back front of the machine towards the back. And I always cut a nice clean end on my thread because it goes to the eye of the needle so much easier. You're not fighting all those little frayed ends glancing off the sides of the needle. Hold your thread, hold your needle thread, and turn the hand wheel towards you one full revolution. The needle will take the thread down and uh, the hook will grab it and wrap it around the bobbin and bring up your lower thread. So one full revolution towards you until the needle comes all the way back up and there's your bottom thread. Put the thread between the toes of the presser foot and towards the back of the machine and we're ready to sew. I have some denim here. Lower the presser foot onto the fabric by using a little lever on the back and um, Let's see, let's uh, look at the stitch length first. This is your stitch length lever here. And um, this position here is zero. That's where your thread doesn't go forward or backwards. If you go down from that position, your th stitches get longer and longer and longer until you reach your longest stitches all the way at the bottom. From this position up, your stitches get longer and longer, but in reverse. 
So we're going to go down so about 12 stitches per inch. And this uh, thumb screw here, uh, you can use to set your stitch length if you want your reverse stitches to be the same length as your forward stitches. So I've got it on 12. Tighten the knob until it contacts the lever. And then your reverse stitches are the same length as your forward stitches. But we're going to leave that wide open for now. There is a handy uh, stitch pattern chart here on the other side of the lid. And if you look at it, it will show you that to do straight stitch, you want to set your stitch pattern to A, K. It's A through J on this side and K through S on the other side. Push in the outer knob and turn it until the pointer reaches the A position. Make sure it pops all the way back out again before you try to do the other one. Now take the inner knob, pull the inner knob out and turn it down to the K position. Make sure that it goes all the way back in and then you're ready to sew a straight stitch. This is your stitch length lever. I mean, no, this is your stitch width lever, and um, it's also your needle position lever. On straight stitch, number three is your center position, number one is your left hand position, number five is your right hand position. So we're going to leave it on three and sew in the center position. Okay, folding your threads for the first couple of stitches until it locks in place, give it a little gas and off we go. Excuse my jiggly traveling table. This is the table that I take with me uh, when I take the uh, shop on the road. Uh, and it's not real stable for uh, running machines on, but it uh, does the trick, and it's perfect for this area where I pack my machines to ship. I'll go for a little longer stitch length, and you'll see the fabric move faster because each stitch is longer. And you can see that the stitches are nice, evenly balanced on both sides. And um, we're ready to sew something fancier. Okay, I'm going to bring the stitch length back up to oh, about 20 stitches per inch. And we're going to do one of the fancy stitches. If you consult your chart here, it tells you how to sew a straight stitch, how to use the needle position, um, and how to sew these basic stitches here. And for these stitches, uh, on the top row, you can use all of the widths from 1 through 5, or 0 through 5 actually, but 0 is straight stitch. Uh, the second row, you want to be on three, on your stitch width. Uh, on the next row down, you want to be on two. And on the bottom one, you want to be on four and up. So we're going to sew one of these from this row here. And let's see. EP looks interesting. So push in the outer knob. Turn it until the pointer points at E. Make sure that it comes back out again. Pull the inner knob out. And 
turn it until the pointer on this side points to P. There we go. On three, EP. Here we go. You can see that the needle is doing interesting things going back and forth like that. That's me varying the speed, by the way. And this is the interesting pattern that it made. I'm not sure you can see that. Let's try a different one. Let's try one from this row. We're going to set the stitch width on two. And let's do G and R. So push this knob in. Oh, make sure your needle is up out of the fabric. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. Push it in, go to G, pull it out, go to R. Q and R. So basically, that's that's how you use this section here. This is your tension assembly. Uh, when I set up a machine, I usually set the tension at around three. So I set it so for normal sewing, you want to set your machine on three. If you're sewing something really lightweight, you might want a little bit less tension if the fabric's puckering up maybe. Or if you're sewing something really heavy, you may need a little more tension. But for regular sewing, regular fabric, um, start on three. And look at your fabric. If it's loose and loopy on the bottom, uh, you need a little more upper tension. If it's puckering up and pulling, you, know, you want a little less tension. But basically around three. This is the pressure on your presser foot. When you screw it clockwise, it adds more pressure onto your fabric. When you turn it counterclockwise, less pressure. Uh, when you use a lighter tension, you probably also want to use a little less pressure and uh, heavier fabric, uh, more tension, a little more pressure. Uh, if you're doing embroidery or uh, that sort of thing, you want to turn the, uh, you want to back that off until there's virtually no pressure on your presser foot. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, uh, if you sew all day, every day, you want to oil your machine every day. If you sew uh, a couple days a week, but all day long, uh, oil it every week or two. If you sew on rare occasions and just bring it out to hem your pants or do a special project and it hasn't been oiled in three months, uh, oil it because the uh, oil does evaporate and uh, you want that. You want all your parts to slip and slide against each other on a thin film of oil. Um, your slide on bed extension also houses your accessories. You have four different stitch pattern cams which go in here. You just press them down, line them up with the guide pin on the side. And um, in that case, you would set uh, the pull-out knob on special. I think you set this one on A, but you want to you wanna consult your manual about that. You have some spare bobbins here, some tools, 
some uh, various presser feet and uh, a couple of different stitch plates uh, and a needle threader. So all that's in here and to uh, reinstall your bed you just line it up and slide it on. There you have it. This is your Singer 431G. Uh, we are a Stagecoach Road vintage sewing machine. If you've come here from somewhere else on the internet, uh, followed a link and got here. Um, we've been restoring vintage sewing machines for uh, 25 years or so, and um, we're good at it. Uh, we're on Stagecoach Road out here in the Coast Range of Oregon. Uh, so we are stagecoachroadsewing.com uh, and if you come out to our website uh, you'll see literally hundreds and hundreds of beautiful machines that we've restored over the years and you'll see photos from all different directions and uh, a little bit of information about each one and uh, at the top of the page uh, there are usually a few that are for sale uh, beautifully restored machines guaranteed for life um, so that's stagecoachroadsewing.com and we'll see you there <laughs>